Hi, I'm Tom Hoskins, editor of Mining Journal, and I'm here with Ross McElroy, who's CEO of Fission Uranium, which is developing the PLS Uranium project home to the Triple R deposit in Canada's Athabasca Basin. Hi, Ross, how's it going? Uh, doing well, thank you. Uh, great to talk to you today, Tom. Excellent, good stuff. Well, so as many viewers may be aware, or will be aware, it's been a pretty exciting time in the Uranium space over the last few months. We've seen sharp rise in, rise in prices as the physical Uranium funds have increased their purchases, um, and the utilities are now poised to re-enter the market to secure term volumes. Um, the future for nuclear is also looking rosier. Uh, it's got a few major economies, notably the, the US backing atomic energy um, as a reliable base, base load fuel. Um, so all this means investor interest in uranium is very much on the rise. Um, and there are a lot of companies vying for attention. So Ross, I'd just like to kick off with asking you what makes you guys stand out from the rest of the crowd? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think what really uh, makes us stand out, I mean, there's a number of elements. First of all, where our project is located, it's in the Athabasca Basin uh, in the province of Saskatchewan in Canada. Saskatchewan's a, a highly, highly ranked district um, with respect to mining investment. Um, a number of uh, groups rank it, you know, in the, in the upper five jurisdictions in the world. Uh, it's unique in that it, it hosts the world's uh, highest grade uranium deposits and ours is uh, large, it's a high grade deposit and it's shallow and in basement rock. So, you know, you put together all those elements together, it really is a unique project um, and, uh, you know, we're advancing it towards ultimate goal of production. So where are you at right now? We've completed a pre-feasibility study on the Triple R deposit. So the, the overall project is called PLS. The deposit within it is the Triple R deposit. Um, it's in the southwest side of the basin, but we completed a, uh, a pre-feasibility study in 2019, and which envisions um, developing the Triple R deposit as an underground only operation. So. Um, the stage we're at now, we kickstarted off our feasibility study this summer. So we retooled the company, built a new team that's uh, that's able to advance the project through the you know the next phase, the engineering phase, if you will, of, of feasibility, and built up the team and on the permitting side and on uh, relations with 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 northern indigenous groups. So um, you know, I think we're we're well prepared for for the next phase of work, which ultimately gets us much closer to the production uh, scenario that we envision on the project. Okay, yeah, I was going to touch on the First Nations question um, because, you know, there have been concerns raised by, by, um, by them about the impact of, potential impact of uranium mining on, on the region. How are you, how are you dealing with, with that, that challenge? Uh, you know, it's, it's always um, going to, uh, to, to be a, an, an issue that, um, that companies have to deal with. We, we understand we're in a remote part of the, the province. There are a number of uh, Indigenous groups that have, um, that are rights holders and, and have, uh, you, know, acts, you know, historical um, documentation to, to the area for hunting and trapping and, you know, and other uses. Um, we have a relationship with, uh, with a number of the groups. We have a formal capacity and funding agreement with the CRDN, uh, the Clearwater River Dene Nation, um, where we're working together uh, on this project as we advance further into the environmental assessment phase, ultimately through the um, environmental impact statement. Uh, but it is a cooperative uh, arrangement that we have. And so I think, you know, the, the fact that um, I think what you've seen in the news is, uh, you know, I think that it's warranted, but it, it's it's basically notification to the government and to the industry that um, that there are uh, First Nation groups with uh, with rights in the area and, and they need to be recognized. And we do. Uh, so I think we're working quite successfully. We've got um, you know, a, a, I think a, a very strong relationship. You could, you know, even access. We, we've done a video, recent video, with the uh, chief uh, Teddy Clark of the CRDN, and that that's posted on our website. And I think you you get a more in depth um, 
feeling of, of the sort of uh, the, the relationship that, that the two groups have together? Um, so I guess, well, assuming all, all goes well and you get into production and you're ramping up, what, um, what, what do things look like sort of five, 10 years, 10 years down the line? And where do you think uranium sex? I mean, this is a bit of a crystal ball sort of exercise, but, you know, where, where do you think we'll be, um, you know, at that point? Well, uh, you know, I, I certainly think the, the sector is going to continue to strengthen the price of the commodity, uh, you know, by all appearances looks to, you know, be on a trajectory going higher and higher and higher. And really, that's because the demand is there, you know, the build out of nuclear reactors is real, it's ongoing. Uh, in some countries, it, it's ongoing at a very rapid pace. I look at China as being a, you know, starting to become a very dominant player in the uh, nuclear energy generation um, uh, scenario. Uh, it won't be too long, probably 10 or 15 years before they're probably the dominant uh, player on a country basis. Um, we, we see demand growing. We know that uh, the low uranium prices that we've experienced over the last decade um, have really constricted supply. So there's a supply crunch, there's a demand, growth i think the sector looks really good you know five or six years we you know whether you're going to you know how can i predict the price it's a little bit difficult but i i think it'll certainly be significantly north of where it's sitting right now which is close to um it was in the high 40s uh dollar per pound u308 so i think i think it'll be substantially higher than that as we move forward and do you have a sense about the the utilities when you know when we're going to start seeing when we're going to start seeing them, them move? Yeah, I think uh, you know it's it's probably the time is is almost now. Um, you know that whole uh, scenario for how the utilities were buying and uh, uh, buying uranium, you know, on a contract basis, really got broken after the the Fukushima event, and you know, and they were the price of the commodity had been so low and. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, basically contracts were not being renewed because the prices were too low in order to incentivize production, you know, that scenario. But that's starting to change now, I think. I think with a with a significant improve in the price of uranium, as I said, it's in the high 40s. Now term prices are over $50. Um, I think the utilities are going to start coming back in a meaningful way and uh, probably sooner rather than later. In fact, we may even be starting to see the beginnings of that right now. Okay. And, and, and so what price, what price do you guys need to, to, to be in the money? Well, we've uh, done our pre-feasibility study at $50 uh, uranium, and that's really the price where it sits right now. So all the economics that, you're, that you've seen in the, in the PFS, which is very robust, um, is at today's uranium prices. So when we look forward for where this project is going to be in uh, you know, six or seven years from now when it's a producing asset, We'll say, um, you know, we, we expect that the price of uranium will be substantially higher than where it is right now. And, and from a financing standpoint, how are you, how are you guys positioned? We're, we're doing very well. Um, we have uh, over $50 million right now in the Treasury. Um, you know, that's certainly uh, sufficient to take us through the feasibility study, um, which we plan to wrap up in, in 2022 towards the end of, of next uh, calendar year. Um, that, you know, so I think we're well positioned right now financially. Um, we're a healthy company. Uh, uh, you know, I think that'll carry us all the way through all of next year and, you know, possibly beyond. Perfect. Okay, Ross. Well, um, I think that pretty much, um, that pretty much wraps it up for, for today. But thank you very much indeed for joining me. Oh, it's been fantastic. Great to be able to update you know, on, uh, you know, on our PLS project. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Ross. Well, um, I'm sure we'll speak again before too long, but for now, that concludes this video for Mining Journal. Goodbye.